Hi, I'm Katie Brenzel. I'm a senior reporter with The Real Deal. I'm here today with James Whalen. He is president of the Real Estate Board of New York. Um, Jim, I wanted to start off by asking you sort of what an average day looks for you like for you now uh, in this new reality that we've found ourselves in. Are you you're working from home? Uh, I am. I'm, uh, I'm in God's country out in Belrose, Queens. So um, you know, it's uh, with two college age kids. It's sort of a tight fit because they're both home from school. Mm -hmm. And sort of like, what's what's your day to day like now? Uh, I mean, it, it's re really been crisis management seven days a week. Um, you know, the, the priorities are getting accurate information out to the membership in terms of the change environment, the change rules. Um, number two, trying to help them adopt to the change environment and trying to still conduct business to the extent one can in this environment. Um, three, we've been very active working with state and city partners to try to address some of their needs in terms of finding space, locating medical supplies. And then increasingly our attention is turning to what the policy prescription should be moving forward in the future at the federal, state, and city level to really get us all back on our feet. What are some of the policies you're you're looking for at this point at the city level and the state level for your members? Uh, you know, I mean, most immediately in, in terms of triaging the current situation, um, it, it, let's say in the brokerage community, is try to get as much of the transactions done online as possible and, and, and minimize human in interaction, right? So last week, the governor was good enough uh, to move forward with our suggestion that notarization could be done electronically. Uh, a key piece that we're working on with NYSAR right now is what do we do about the county clerk's office? offices, because that's where you need to go to record a lot of uh, deeds and transactions. So looking at whether or not that could be done electronically, and if it can't, then do it in such a way that minimizes human interaction so that things like closings that are underway can still close out and get past the finish line. No, the, the governor had barred all employees of non-essential businesses last week of reporting to work outside their homes. Um, my understanding is that includes you know, residential commercial brokers, so they can't do showings in person now as well. Um, I guess, what have you heard from members on that front? And, and what has, I guess, been your advice and how to deal with that? I mean, it, it's challenging, right? So, uh, you know, again, we're, we're looking to see what can be done to move as much of these processes online as possible. So from some conversations uh, I've participated in, some folks are looking to see to do virtual showings um, and, and maintain communications with clients in that respect. Mm -hmm. And the state also enacted a moratorium on evictions. Um, what are you hearing from residential and commercial landlords? I guess, what are their options at, at this point? I, it, there's an understanding that we're in a crisis that one, you know, has never encountered before, right? And there's a lot of folks, um, you know, who are in troubled times, um, losing jobs, losing revenue sources. It's why we stepped out over a week and a half ago, recognizing the looming crisis and a whole bunch of revenue members stepped forward and said they'd be calling a timeout on evictions for a period of 90 days. You know, I, there's a recognition that, you know, there are folks who are going to have problems paying their rent on the residential commercial side. Um, we're just looking on the part of public officials and others to have a responsible conversation about it though, right? Because uh, there'll still be folks who can pay their rent and hopefully from a legal and just, you know, philosophical basis, they keep up their end of the bargain and, and pay their rent, right? Uh, the second thing that one's got to recognize is if there's going to be a diminishment in rent payment, then from an owner's point of view, there needs to be an offset in terms of expenses paid, be it debt um, or utilities and the like. And then, you know, thinking about how the chain progresses, um, you know, one's got to be conscious of the liquidity of banks and making sure they're, they're backstopped. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we all should be keeping an eye on what's going on in Washington right now, because that's, that's really the most critical next piece in terms of what happens with our economy is the federal government needs to really step up to the plate and make sure that folks have the ability to pay their bills, um, go about their daily lives, make sure that owners can continue to maintain their properties for their tenants and their residents, and that banks are still in a position um, to help fund the economy moving forward. That when you, you look at 
financial situations, the sitting state are not in a position to play that role. It has to start with the federal government. What about um, a delay in property taxes? Is that something that Rebney is, is pushing for? Property yeah, and, 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 and you know, that the city and state have been responsive about um, looking to move the period uh, for payments back by a few weeks from now, and that might be readjusted in, in the future and the need to sort of waive penalties for late payments and the like. Um, you know, we have found the communication flow with city and state officials to be very good very responsive. They're in a very tough situation, right? They are tri triaging an unprecedented uh, crisis. Would you say the state is more willing on that front simply because I know the mayor yesterday had sort of been reluctant to okay and a delay in, in property tax payments. I'm just wondering if, if you're hearing something different from the state versus the city. No, we find them to be both very responsive. Um, I mean, I, I think they're doing a, a, a terrific, terrific job managing the situation that's been presented to them. Um, I mean, there's no doubt that Governor Cuomo, his performance has been of a historic nature. I think they'll be writing books about the leadership he's shown during this period of time uh, for years to come. Uh, you know, his daily press conferences uh, of a nature that my wife and I make a point of watching it every day for the information that he conveys and the reassurance he conveys. It's really like a 21st century version of the fireside chats that FDR used to give. Would a tax abatement be helpful in that regard, just in, to help rental, rental landlords get back some of their lost rent during this time? Is that something you're uh, well, I mean, we, we may get to that point. I, I think the most immediate need is you know, recognizing that, um, you know, there's a bunch of folks who won't be able to pay their rent is what's the commensurate step that's taken on an, you know, on behalf of an owner in terms of expenses they need to meet um, to, to make sure that they can continue to maintain and operate their properties. And again, you know, looking at the entire picture, then you got to take into account what the needs of banks are, right? Because as lending institutions, um, you, you want them to be liquid and able to sort of uh, maintain their responsibilities uh, and operate as uh, viable institutions moving forward. In regards to the, the non-essential versus essential business issue, do you think that all construction could, should be considered essential? Well, you know, New York is not unique in this regard, right? I mean, Chicago, Los Angeles, Miami are among some of the places that have deemed construction essential. You know, construction is unique in the sense that it's largely an outdoor activity. And, you know, I, I think what public officials are trying to balance here is, you know, we have a public safety crisis, a health crisis that needs to be addressed. And you also want to maintain basic economic activity moving forward, right? And it, it, the way construction has been treated is really no different than the way news media has been treated or financial institutions have been treated in terms of the designation uh, of being considered essential. It, with that said, sites need to be maintained safely. So we're about to be issuing protocols that we've worked out with the Building and Construction Trades Council, with Gary LaBarbera, with the building trade unions, um, sharing with our members. We've gotten input from some of our members on this, but protocols in terms of safe practices moving forward. But I mean, should all construction be, I guess, considered the same here? You know, luxury condo construction is something that came up during the mayor's press conference yesterday versus, you know, infrastructure, affordable housing. I guess I'm just wondering if you can make the case that they should be on the same playing field in this situation. Well, on the flip side, I, I'm just not clear why condo construction would be considered less safe than any other construction site. So, I mean, there, there, there seems to be a certain amount of ideology being interjected into this conversation. Mm. What do you think of the call for a rent freeze that some legislators have put forward? I believe there's a bill that's being introduced today to that effect. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it got introduced in the past half hour. Um, you know, my staff's keeping me up to speed. Um, you know, it gets back to the conversation we were having before, which is, uh, you know, there's an understanding that there's a whole bunch of folks, you know, on both the commercial and residential side who are going to have challenges paying rent you know, one needs to keep in mind. And it, this is often missing from the public talking points of some of the public officials involved in this discussion is there's a whole bunch of folks who are going to be able to continue, can 
continue to keep paying rent, right? So ideally, they're not taking advantage of this crisis to be irresponsible. Folks who can pay rent should continue to pay rent. Um, and then recognizing that there's a whole bunch of folks who won't be able to pay rent. There needs to be acknowledgement um, with respect to the owner that there needs to be an offset in terms of the expenses they need to pay, be it utility, taxes, and the like. And then, to, you know, to round out the picture, you know, one's got to be conscious of the needs of banks and utilities and um, being able to continue to operate. So there really needs to be a holistic solution to this that addresses the needs of not only tenants, but owners, financial institutions, and the like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, with the essential work order that the governor signed, a lot of companies are working from home. Um, and I'm wondering, I guess, if this will result in companies realizing that they have the capabilities to have their employees work remotely. Um, and then they might in turn decide to decrease their physical footprint um, in terms of their office space in the city. And I was wondering if you're hearing from any commercial owners who are concerned about that, who are considering maybe paring down their portfolio based on that. Um, just curious what you're hearing on that front. No, it hasn't come up. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to take time to really determine um, what the impact of this crisis will be on life moving forward. Uh, you know, just to touch upon a few things anecdotally, you know, I, I remember the atmosphere after 9-11. Um, and there was a lot of talk about, um, you know, the decentralization of operations and, you know, that New York was really going to suffer on the commercial side with, um, you know, companies looking to decentralize their operation throughout the country and throughout the world. And, you know, to be quite frank, I mean, New York City's economy was never stronger since the days of 9-11, right? Um, number two is you, you can't underestimate human interaction. Um, you know, we had a full staff meeting by phone this morning. Um, and folks, you know, are really want to get back together and see each other. And, you know, I'd imagine it's no different for the real deal and the, the countless organizations that will be um, uh, watching this interview. You can't underestimate uh, human contact and human interaction. So, you know, I think one's got to take a, a wait and see attitude in terms of what the impact of this crisis is going to be on, you know, the daily economic life of New York City and America as a whole moving forward. Now, I know we've we've talked about this issue quite a bit. Um, you know, the past year for the real estate industry was a tough one given the sweeping changes to the rent stabilization law and I think just overall the perception of the industry in, in New York. Um, and I was wondering if, if there's hope that some of the actions that Revney has taken, you know, during this crisis will build some goodwill among the public um, or at least help change the perception of, of, real, of the real estate industry in New York. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of my goals that I think you and I have talked about is, uh, you know, real estate is central um, to New York City. Uh, we account for over 50% of the tax revenue the city collects on an annual basis. Real estate taxes account for enough money to cover the salary of every municipal employee. So, you know, our fate and the city's fate are inextricably linked. Um, and we, we as an industry need to place a, a much greater premium uh, as being seen as a responsible civic partner moving forward. You know, in terms of this crisis, and you know, the governor started to talk about this today. So we, you know, we need to start focusing on the idea we're gonna come out of this crisis and we need to bounce back strong in an economic way. Um, and real estate's gonna be essential to that for the reasons I said before about how intertwined we are to the city, city's economic future. So we really need to be searching for ways coming out of this crisis to make sure that brokers are selling apartments, space is being rented, new buildings are going up, because that's what's gonna generate the economic activity and tax revenue to help put the city and state back on its feet. Speaking of, of the governor, I know, you know, in the lead up to the passage of the rent stabilization law, some revenue members were unhappy with the governor's performance in, in, in relation to the talks leading up to that law being passed. Um, has his, have his actions during this time helped repair Rebney's relationship with the governor? Well, I mean, you know, it's something I think you and I have, have talked about, you know, our, our, uh, modus operandi um, 
dealing with elected officials shouldn't be an assumption that we're going to be in lockstep on every issue and that we're going to see eye to eye on every issue. I think what's really essential is looking for elected officials who are willing to sit down and talk and reason and talk things out. And even after those conversations, we might not end up on the same page. Um, you know, uh, as I said before, the governor's performance during this crisis has been historic. Uh, you know, I think it'll be written about and analyzed for years to come. And, you know, the tenure of this governor, um, I think, has been a historic one over the last 10 years as well. Yeah, like other elected officials, there's been issues that have come up that, you know, maybe he and the real estate industry haven't seen eye to eye on. But, you know, overall, I think it's kind of hard to argue that this has, hasn't been an incredibly successful uh, term as governor. Beyond um, reacting to the day-to-day -day changes that we've been seeing, what kind of leadership has the industry shown or should be, or should it be showing right now? I know during the oil, oil crisis in the 70s, uh, developers got together and prepaid their taxes to help keep the city afloat. Is, is anything like that happening right now? Well, the, the most immediate things that have been going on is, number one, we've been helping out trying to secure uh, medical supplies that the state and city very much need. And I got to tell you, a big shout out to Darcy Statecom because she's been a superstar uh, working with the governor's office and working with us in that respect. Um, number two, we've been working very closely with the city and state in terms of finding space that they anticipate they're going to need over the coming weeks to just manage this crisis in terms of uh, storage facilities, places to put hospitals and the like. Um, you know, the most recent thing we've been involved in is trying to identify space where medical personnel um, can sleep and stay uh, in the coming weeks as, you know, this crisis continues to build. Um, and then, you know, we're continuing to have conversations internally in terms of what type of role we can play moving forward uh, in helping the city and state cope with this crisis. And what do you think should be the biggest takeaways for the industry as, you know, so far from our experiences dealing with, with this crisis? Well, I, I think that the one thing everybody needs to keep an eye on is, um, I mean, these are very difficult times, but they will end. And the real estate industry needs and will play a critical role in the city and state's recovery.